Rob Langridge is the first question I'm gonna answer. He says, hey, were Jamie's white shirt, gray pants beret, and your black shirt and jeans a decision handed down from producers or your actual everyday wear? Not quite either. But the answer is so, is so much more catch as catch can than you would, than you would believe. Um, Mythbusters was, came about, uh, we shot the pilot, we sent in a demo reel in the spring of 2002. We shot the pilots in the early summer of 2002. Those were cut into the first three episodes of Mythbusters, which aired in January of 2003. At this point in time, uh, Monster Garage, Jesse James' build show, and uh, 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 American Chopper with the Tuttles were the only two truly personality-based shows on the, on the Discovery Networks. It was the early foray Discovery was making into talent-based content. And as such, we made the show with a shoestring crew that would never happen today. And I think that's a little bit of a loss. So we shot the, we, we shot the demo reel, we sent it in. The camera crew from Beyond Productions showed up three weeks later and it was producer, camera, sound, and production manager. And one other person, a second camera, and then Jamie and I, and it was, that was it. It was like seven or eight of us making, working for six weeks on the pilots of Mythbusters. And I mean, I firmly believe that the, that, the tininess of that crew and how light we were able to be on our feet was intrinsic to the the aesthetic and content ethos of Mythbusters. It wasn't, <clears throat> look, you step onto a pilot today, even for uh, the smallest reality show, and you're gonna have 20 to 40 people on a set. You'll have a video village. There's all these people running around. And don't get me wrong, that is a way to make television. Uh, and it's a way, you know, that's a tried and true method that the industry likes. But I feel like there's also a space, uh, you know, and it's showing up more in places like YouTube where, you know, on YouTube you can make content with very little infrastructure. And that lack of infrastructure leads, <clears throat> for us, it led to a more intimate relationship with the camera because it's hard to know what to do when someone says, you're now hosting a show, okay, and put the camera on their thing, on their shoulder and say, go, <clears throat> which was what it was like. In fact, re your question about what we wore, they simply, I don't think they said anything specific to us. Oh no, okay. Jamie and I both surmised that we should have an outfit. We both realized that we probably should have an outfit. And so I went out to the thrift store and I, I, I had mostly crew shirts from movies, uh, you know, Space Cowboys, AI, Terminator 3, et cetera. Cause you know, you work on movies at ILM, you get a shirt at the end of every production. So I had a ton of ILM shirts, but I wasn't gonna wear those on TV. So I went to the thrift store and bought a bunch of black t-shirts and I wore my natural blundstone shoes and the black t-shirts and the blue jeans. And I was like, this is my thing. This is my jam. Uh, and I can't remember if Jamie and I had a conversation about it, but he thought through the same problem and thought, all right, I know that Adam always wears, is gonna wear the black t-shirt. So he went out and bought 10 button up white shirts and he wore the khakis normally anyway. Um, so yeah, we sort of both surmised that it would make sense for us to have an outfit. And then on the very first day of shooting, our cameraman, the great and amazing Paul Henry, um, just look, like literally he's doing the first shot. He's like dialing in, focusing on the first shot. And then he says, oh, by the way, if you could roughly wear, if you could wear roughly the same thing every day, that would be great. And he put the camera back. And that is the sum total of all anyone said to us ever about what we wore until like 2013. I went, in 2013, I went through a spate of wearing some polo type shirts. And Tracy, our EP at Discovery at that point, made the very good note that when I wore a polo shirt, it did not transmit that I was ready to get dirty. And she was right. And so I went back to black t-shirts. Um, that literally, that's the sum total of all the discussions that have ever happened around what Jamie and I wore on the show. Um, and like I said, that, that, that 
super lightweight crew for the pilots. And even when we went into full production on Mythbusters, we were about 10 people for the first season. We went up to about 16 or 17 for the second season when we had the second space. And I think at the peak of Mythbusters, we were maybe 20 strong tops. Um, so in every way, we were a very lightweight production in terms of crew. And I really do think that that was intrinsic to, to the success of the show. Um, if you are in a position where someone is gonna make a show and you are in it and on it, and it is a reality show, my advice to you, it's less about the outfit than it is about having a really good relationship with your camera person. That, that relationship between you and that camera person is super, super important. And I was really, Jamie and I were both incredibly lucky that our first two cameramen were Paul Henry and Peter Coleman. Um, both world-class cameramen. You look over their shoulder as they're shooting B-roll and every one of their shots looks like a, a beautiful movie. Uh, they know their business just inside and out and they don't make mistakes, those two. And they're both super kind humans. And they laughed at our jokes. I can't even tell you how important that is. When your cameraman laughs at your jokes, you don't have an audience. You don't know how this stuff is landing. And so that interaction is really important. Later on, I had some cameramen who weren't as kind or involved. Um, luckily, those were brief Those were brief episodes. Uh, Peter Heat was one of our cameramen for the longest time, lovely human with a vicious sense of humor. Uh, Tim Elwood, uh, and then uh, Benny, and then Saza. Um, we were blessed. We were blessed over the, all the years of Mythbusters with great cameramen, and I am blessed on, on, on Tested here with Joey and Josh. Uh, Josh is our newest addition to the tested team. Um, but still, that relationship really matters. That, that feeling and interaction between you and the camera, uh, it's significant. You asked about the clothes and I ended up talking about the cameramen, but I mean, it's all part and parcel of the same thing. Um, so I'm excited about the YouTube, Instagram, TikTok model of content because I think it's pulling us back into some lightweight productions that yield different kinds of content. I'm not gonna say it's better. I don't think any one thing is the right way to do stuff, but you know, it's funny when Jamie and I did uh, Dangerous Toys with Discovery, um, that was a big network show. And even though we only made one episode, I think we had like 50 people on that crew. We had a whole video village. It was a very top heavy crew. And it was funny how kind of interestingly tough it was for Jamie and I to manage that. We did, and we had a terrific production crew um, uh, supervised by Chris Cowan. Uh, and you know, it wasn't like we felt any lack of, of input or control. It's just, I prefer, a, I prefer the, the smallest possible crew if I can, if I can, if I can swing it. Yeah. Um, Rob, thank you for that great question. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to support us even further, you can by becoming a tested member. Uh, details are, of course, below, but it includes all sorts of perks and we're building them all the time. You get advanced word and behind the scenes photos of some of our projects. Questions, you get to ask direct questions during my live streams and we have some members only videos, including the Adam real time series of unbroken, unedited shots of me working here in the shop. They are weirdly meditative. Thank you guys so much. I'll see you on the next one.